Somebody start forward. Okay, there's uh, three of us doing this presentation. Um, uh, Taz, uh, Ben, and myself. Um, I can't pronounce Taz's name other than it's Taz, T-E-Z. Uh, so go ahead and click on there. And we're doing, obviously, racing games. And I'm going to start off a little with the history of racing games. And I'm John, and oh, the other important thing to know is that I'm from Alaska, and I'm John, and so my, my worksheet is at alaskajohn.com slash AI. And uh, that's where you also find the full, you can watch the full video there, uh, that link, so go ahead and click. Um, okay, so there's a little bit of history of games. Uh, picture up top left here is sort of where we, where we started before computers were. Uh, racing games with a little wheel that spun. But uh, the first real racing games, this game up top, which is called uh, Grand Track 10, came out in 1974. Um, and uh, it didn't have any AI, but it was a game. And I actually do remember playing this. There's a big wheel on the arcade, and you spun it, and I'd always hit in the corner there, and I wasn't any good at it. But then the next game that actually was considered the first game with artificial intelligence, as far as racing games are concerned, is Pole Position. And uh, I just a little anecdote. I remember playing pole position on my Commodore 64, but we only had a black and white monitor. And the wheels would turn red when they were ready to explode because you hadn't changed the wheels or anything. And, uh, and I would always die because I couldn't see on my black and white monitor when the wheels turned red. Um, but so the, we're, we're going to kind of focus on a couple areas of the genre of racing games. And there are a lot of genres or a lot of areas of, of, of this genre uh, that, that just go, you know, many, many, many different categories of what racing games can be. We're kind of sticking to cars. Uh, there's hoverboards and hovercrafts and, and jet boats and all that, but we're going to kind of stick to that and then stick to these particular areas because they are specific to uh, sort of the topic of AI. And the next one would be um, sort of the addition of power-ups. And the next big game where power-ups were, were added was uh, Super Nintendo. Mario Kart with the idea that you're not just simply racing, but you're picking up things that can then help you battle the other racers. And then that kind of takes to the next, which is uh, Freeform Worlds, which is you're not stuck to a track. Um, and then 1999's uh, Reflection Interactive Driver, I think Driver Parallel Lines is the latest one out in that series. And then Vehicular Combat would be kind of take these two areas, the power-ups and the Freeform, freeform Worlds, and, and you just have a free-for-all as a uh, and so there is some racing aspect to it, but it kind of goes beyond all that. And I threw in one of my old favorite uh, companies, Origin Systems, Auto Duel, which is uh, a very old game um, up here in the corner here, which uh, was quite enjoyable uh, to see that that was, you know, on Wikipedia. Uh, uh, so uh, the, the, the history, uh, to go a little farther, I guess this isn't so much history, but... Um, the task isn't to create a realistic goal-seeking behavior, clever tactical reasoning, or route finding. Although all of these may occur in some driving games, the player will judge the competency of the AI by how well, how well it drives the car. And I think you've got a book there, the one on the left. You hold that one up. Yeah, that's where that quote came from. That book there, and that book is actually available online. If on the link, you can read the whole book, Google Books. Uh, it's got the whole thing there, which is kind of cool. Uh, but if you take uh, take sort of the AI of driving games, there's, there's two areas, steering and pathfinding. And I'm kind of, that's what I'm going to use to break them up to talk about the two topics. Um, steering, uh, sort of the basic and what you see when you read the most about online, if you're going to make your own racing games, how you would do it as a, as a hobby game maker, is using these racing lines. And this was used extensively up until we finally had enough CPU power to do something else. Um, and you can see 1996, to me that's pretty recent, I guess it's 11 years ago, but I remember 96. Um, uh, Formula One was a game that used this, and then as recently as 2001, uh, GTA 3 uh, used this technique in, uh, as far as their, their background animation. But what it is is you simply just draw a line and have the cars follow that line, and they're stuck to that line. Um, you use a spline. Uh, raise your hand if you know what a spline is. Okay, probability tells me that I should explain, um, uh, uh, or uncertainty. Um, but uh, a spline is a, is a line determined by a formula. So you have uh, a mathematical formula, uh, imagine 2D space. You've got a line that, that, that shows what that, that line is, or a, a formula that shows what that line is. And that is your line that then is then created for your, uh, your characters to move along. That line can include additional data, like velocity. So you can say, as you get to a turn, you want the, 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 the car to slow down. Um, the advantage is it's very easy to, to create, very cheap, uh, you know, something artists can do with a, a, a spline creation tool. Um, the disadvantages, obviously, are that it's very, very limited. 
Uh, some real obvious examples is if you know uh, if you have a car that that wants to overtake another, you it's difficult to do. You can do by adding additional uh, programming, but it becomes difficult to do. NPR, NPC cars will not avoid crashes and crashes in front of them because they're following the line. So they see another car there, they're uh, they're just going to crash into it. And then NPC cars will not be deflected when colliding with another player. So if you have a player that comes along, hits into the car, the car will stay there because it's staying on that racing line. Again, very simple, but but not necessarily very realistic. Um, so the next option would be that you actually have the car be driven by the AI. And this uh, has changed over time. When we first started doing this, uh, the steering was done um, in a set of controls that were similar to what the player would have, but not the same. It was a, a simplified version of what the, the controls the player had. Modern games, apparently, it's, uh, it's pretty much uh, one for one as far as the controls that are available to the AI to steer as far as, as, as well as the player. Um, so then the question is, uh, if, if you're steering and following, uh, or you, you have these controls, how do you determine where you're going to steer? And so then they, you started using racing lines uh, as um, a guide to determine to follow. The, the, the AI would steer, but would steer towards the racing lines and use the racing lines again as a guide. Well, what this did was in uh, Gran Turismo in 1997, uh, people found out that if you go beside a, another vehicle and you slam into them, well, it's still trying to follow that line, so it got deflected. Now it's going to speed up to catch to whatever its racing speed should have been at that point, but now it's going too fast and doesn't have time to break, and so then it overcorrects and ends up slamming into the next corner. And so that was like an easy cheat because the AI didn't know any better. Um, so then another way of using racing lines is as an alternative for if you have a long straightaway, instead of just having one racing line, you might have two racing lines. One, the, the, the car would choose if it wants to overtake another vehicle. So just a different way to use that. Another technique for using this determination of how you steer is this chase the rabbit idea, which is you can imagine a dog racing track where you've got a race, uh, a rabbit up in front. The, the, the AI steers towards that rabbit. So kind of turns, if the, the rabbit's around the corner, it's going to turn sooner. Um, it's going to speed up to try to catch the rabbit. It's going to slow down if the rabbit's too close to kind of give a, a again, faking this, this idea of driving. And then finally, a fuzzy decision making via Markov state machines. Uh, as you recall from our, our question I asked many, many weeks ago, was uh, that uh, the difference between a finite state machine and a Markov state machine would be that it knows a little bit about past issues. So knows whether what direction you're going, um, whether or not you just sped up. Uh, whether or not you just slowed down to make the decisions as to what to do. So that actually gets into more of the actual decision making based on looking at the, the, what's in front of the, uh, of the car, the NPC's car. So then I'll kind of wrap up this history with some notes on pathfinding. Um, this, uh, this, this idea of, of what we've talked about just now doesn't really fly when you go into freeform worlds. Um, you no longer have a fixed single track, you've got to make a decision as to where you're going. Um, some of the solutions are, is maybe you have a set path when you're fleeing, or when the character's fleeing, um, and then maybe using a homing in algorithm, uh, kind of like some of the ones we talked to for some of the other character movements, but in a, in a racing game environment, for having uh, characters uh, chase the NPCs in the racing games. Um, but kind of everywhere it said, pathfinding needs are increasing, so although in the past, um, there really wasn't much pathfinding done. Now pathfinding is becoming a bigger and bigger issue and finding ways to make it work in racing games. Um, and then tactical path pathfinding with the idea that maybe you've got cops that are trying to create a roadblock for the character in this racing game or in this, this freeform, freeform world. Um, it, there would be tactical pathfinding in that they would make decisions about where their paths would go in a way so that the characters didn't see where they were going to use the to the roadblock, so they would avoid av avoid uh, uh, going in locations where the player would see them, and then avoid their roadblock. So it becomes pathfinding with sort of this additional tactical side to it. And so as these things advance, we uh, we get into using different techniques. And so Ben's going to talk about using neural networks as we get into some of these advanced uh, features.